Hi there, I'm Black Bright News, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes, on your phones, into your space. Yeah, thank you for welcoming me and um, I hope you like my videos. If it's the first time you're passing through, you're welcome to subscribe, like and share. Today I thought I would tell you about the 15 additional kiosks, immigration kiosks, that have been installed in Sangster Airport. Now, on the surface, that's great. It means efficiency, it means less waiting times, especially when 2.68 million tourists and visitors are expected between, well, before 31st of December. Apparently, Christmas is the highest most, most people come to Jamaica during that time. Um, the Minister of Tourism, Edmund Bartlett, is really pleased with the fact that, you know, they are going to have these 15, 15 immigration kiosks. That's in addition to the 20 already installed. And when I went to Jamaica in September of this year, it was, it was amazing. I mean, sometimes when you think about third world countries or islands, you kind of think, oh, well, you're going to have to go back to traditional methods. And when I went to Sangster Airport, I'm like, bloody hell, they had that kiosk. You just needed to look in it and it, you show your passport and it would identify your passport um, with the image on the screen. It's absolutely phenomenal. But you know what I noticed? The thing is, it's great having all this technology, but at what price? The price is unemployment, loss of jobs. You know, having 30, 35 digital kiosks or immigration kiosks means a loss of a lot of jobs. And the airport was scamp, scant as far as people on the ground working. That's what I saw. Minimal staff, because they don't need it. They just need somebody to direct people off of the plane into the right queue. They need somebody to direct somebody to the immigration kiosk. And I'd imagine that those people um, are quite not very expensive to employ as opposed to the immigration officers and customs officers are more expensive. Now, if they've got machines to do that, that means those people don't have a job. The customs officers and the immigration official, official, officials and all those people have done studied and paid for education. They won't have a job. So, and then I thought to myself, well, what's going to happen next? Well, what's going to happen next? Um, what did they say they're going to also install? Um, but apart from it giving a smart and seamless um process they and eliminating all the paperwork um they're also going to have e-gates well we have e-gates at heathrow and gatwick the two of the largest airports and thanks to airport is going to have e-gates that once again means less staff because all you've got to do is go through walk through with your passport look, look up into the little camera and you're through, boof. And then after that, apparently, they're going to install facial recognition. I thought they had facial recognition in there already because if you, if when you go through there, you have to look into that machine and it marries up with your passport, I thought that was facial recognition. But they're obviously planning to do a different kind of facial recognition. They want to be the most savvy um savvy airport in the world that is what they're aiming for you know jamaica they always want to be the best at everything and that is where they're heading but like i said it is at the cost of people's jobs and you know how are these people going to live how do they now may you know put bread on their table so um, i don't know whether i should tag this on but because it's um to do with technology i am um, Jamaica's coming out with this app. It's a driver's app and it's called a Drive Safely app. And what it does, it allows the community, anybody who sees somebody breaking the law while they're driving, it allows them to take a photo of them. This photo will then give the time, 
the location and probably I don't know if it gives the vehicle number but it goes straight to the traffic um, office for screening so what they're now doing now is that you might want to call them snitches you want what might want to call them um, uh, what are the other names whistleblowers informers community police but this is what they're expecting people to do. They're expecting people to download this app. It's called the Drive Safe app, and it's a reporting mechanism that allows members of the public to upload videos, pictures of drivers breaching road codes and traffic related offenses. So if they've got people doing that, once again, it looks great on the surface, but it's still at a cost of other people's jobs. Now the community is doing the work of the police. And um, yeah, I think all these fancy things are fine, but ah, oh, give me the old days. It's, oh, it's just so, I mean, it really is a big brother world, isn't it? It really is all about watching what people are doing and they make it look so normal people think oh yeah i'm being a citizen i'm being a good neighborhood citizen i'm gonna take a photograph of that man because he broke a light i'm gonna take a photograph of that man because he's talking while he's while he's driving he's talking on the phone i'm gonna take a photograph of that car because it's got ex you know black fumes coming out of the exhaust i'm gonna take a photograph of that woman because she's speeding I'm going to take, you know what I mean? I mean, where does it stop? When all these do-gooders are taking control of other people. That's all I want to say, really. Bye-bye.